And when you think you're better than everyone else, you make enemies. We were perceived as the villains, and we felt we were the villains in comparison to the rest of Canada. Alouette coach Kay Dalton has accused the Argos of slugging, kicking, and roughing Wade on numerous occasions. He uh, tells Tony Moro, Tony, after the play, you turn around and you kick Angelo Mosca right in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you don't really know until we travel out west, you know, and found out how they, they hated us, you know. We had all these characters on the team and they were all getting publicity and we were just like Hollywood team. We really were, I mean, because we had some Hollywood characters. And then the fans were not happy with us. They used to deride us. They would just hurl insults at us. There were nine teams in the league, but it was eight against one. Even with a target on their back, the Argos become the team to beat. And yet, beneath the magic, Leo's masterpiece is starting to crack. There's one player who is dividing this close-knit team. Leon McQuay. Very moody player. He just didn't know which Leon was going to show up. And Leon was very skilled, but he had no discipline. Leon was a very arrogant young man. Leon wouldn't come to practice. Everybody would see Leon not there, and they knew how Leon was. Leo would speak up and say, and by the way, uh, Leon has my permission not to be here. Leo would come and get me and say, Dave, you know, can you get your clothes back on and go get Leon? So I'd get in my car, put my gear back on, get my clothes back on, get in the car and drive to his apartment. Leon, Leon, you have to come to practice. That happened at least three times. When you do things like that on a team and treat people special like that, and then things start kind of deteriorating on the team, and I think that's what started happening. The team wasn't nearly as good as it could have been. To this day, Leo is defiant that he made the right decision standing by Leon. He never did fit in as one of the players on the football team. They didn't have the respect for him that they should have had, but by the same token, he was probably had more ability than any of them. Despite the infight, Leo's eclectic cast of characters come together where it matters most, on the field. In 1971, the Argos achieved what had not too long ago seemed impossible. They defeat their arch rivals, the Hamilton Ticats, in the Eastern Finals, landing them a coveted spot in the Grey Cup. Can you play because you want to win the Grey Cup? There's 32 guys, and we're all part of that. We gotta get there as a group, because you can't do it on your own. That, I think, is what brings everybody together. The fans have waited 19 long years for this moment, and there is no doubt in anyone's mind that the Cup is coming home to Toronto. The Toronto Argonauts and the Calgary Stampede will meet in the Great Cup. We were the best team, and it would take an accident, an error, a complete reversal of fortune for us to lose. The ball is back in the Argos' possession, and they can taste victory. Oh, here comes the moment. I'm covering my eyes. I can't watch it. 
then disaster strikes. Leon McQuay fumbles the ball. And back in 1971, if you kicked the ball out of bounds, it automatically went to the other team. We picked this day to play our worst game. We didn't play our worst game. We just, they just we lost. The game is over, and the Cowboys staff here have won their first Grey Cup since 1948. It's a devastating fall from grace that is just as painful today as it was four decades ago. After the game was over, we were in this dingy, grubby, cold locker room. There wasn't a newspaper guy, there wasn't a TV camera, there was nothing. We just sat there and you learn so quick that when you lose, you're nobody. Yeah, it was, it was heartbreaking because I didn't know if I'd ever get a chance to come back and try it again, you know. We landed uh, back, um, you know, the fans were there to greet us, but you know, you're embarrassed when you get off the plane. And they were behind us 100%. And we let him down. And it's something that you'll, that you've, I've lived with for 40 years. Yeah, it was the, one of the bad times in my life. And I felt bad for the players because, yeah, I felt like I let them down. When Leon slipped, I fell. The fumble is one of the most notorious moments in Grey Cup history. You made that one mistake that possibly cost everybody the opportunity to wear a ring. And I, I think sometimes that burden can be too much to bear. It's a sad thing to say. He always remembered that moment when he fumbled the ball. That constituted or made his life. That slip in the rain would haunt Leon McQuay for the rest of his life. That fumble, it lost us a great cup, but it lost one of the best running backs in that era. It lost him his career. After a lackluster career in the NFL, Leon returned home to Florida, where he became a car mechanic and minister. He would die unexpectedly at age 45, still living in the shadow of the fumble.